Hi everyone! It's been a while since I last posted a video, but I'm back with another manga haul from Right Stuff Anime, and I wanted to share some other items that I got recently from different stores. Anyways, we got a lot to get through today, so let's get started with this unboxing. Alright, so starting with the Right Stuff box first, let me open it up. So most of these books in this package is from Yen Press because I recently just bought a few items uh, from the Yen Press weekly specials. So we got quite a lot of those. And I think there's like some other books from other sales or like new releases that I got. But I love getting this big package because it makes the unboxing a lot easier. I guess to pick, I start with the bigger books first. So we have the latest volume release of In the Clear Moonlit Dusk. So I'm always very happy to grab this newest volume. And yeah, I really like the dynamic between the two main leads. And looking forward to reading this next installment. Mika Yamamori's art is always a pleasure to look at. So yeah, that is In the Clear Moonlit Dusk. And next we have is the next volume of My Happy Marriage, Volume 4. I've been waiting to get my hands on this for the longest because um, Volume 3 ended on a brief cliffhanger, I would say, but I can't wait to see the development in this volume next. And what I really anticipate the most about this series is actually the anime adaptation that's coming on Netflix. Um, this summer so it's coming out in a couple of weeks and I am looking forward to seeing the beautiful visuals I've seen all the trailers for my happy marriage and I am just so excited to see how the adaptation is going to be I love the two main leads as well and their chemistry and I just can't wait to see how the beginning of the series is going to pan out in anime form but yeah that is my happy marriage can't wait to sit down and read this newest volume next we have is the the latest volume release of The Abandoned Empress. Um, I've already read this series in completion um, digitally before, so I'm just kind of collecting it and then maybe doing a reread of this story whenever I finish completing the physical manhwa. But as usual, always love to kind of skim through each volume and see how the story has progressed. I know the story can be frustrating for a lot of manhwa readers because of the way how the story kind of panned out at the end, but um, I love the art of Abandoned Empress and it was one of my earliest manhwa pickups when I actually got into the Korean manhwa world. So um, yeah, super happy that I have this newest volume and can't wait to see how the next volume is going to look like. So yep, yeah, that is the Abandoned Empress Volume 5. The next mod haul we have is Villains Are Destined to Die. This is volume three. Oh my god, Penelope looks so beautiful. And I forgot this guy's name, but I believe this is her brother in game. So I kind of always like their relationship dynamic because he's, I would say, like the better brother of the story. Another story I have been reading digitally, so um, always looking forward to kind of seeing how the physical looks like. I love um, having this physical form and I'll definitely reread um, Villains Are Destined to Die once I collect uh, all of the volumes, but it is still an ongoing series so I'll just stick to the digital because we're kind of a little bit ahead for the story. So yeah, that is the latest volume of Villains Are Destined to Die. Another new release we have is Why Reliana Ended Up at the Duke's Mansion. Ooh, Noah and Rayliana looks so beautiful on this cover and I'm a sucker for blue borders because blue is my favorite color but I actually just finished watching the anime adaptation that came out this season and overall I had pretty good feelings about it. I think um, it does look I guess a little bit different from what I had originally expected but Overall, it was still good to see an adaptation for a manhwa, so I was very impressed and the ending song for the anime was so so good. This arc in this volume here was actually covered in the anime, so it was really cool. 
But yeah, I am so glad we got an anime adaptation and um, fingers crossed, maybe we'll get a season two. I'm not sure, but it would be nice because there's so much of the story that's left to cover. I mean, this series is pretty long itself, so hopefully we do get a second season because I would love to see the whole story um, animated. But yeah, that is the uh, volume three of why Riliana ended up at the Duke's mansion. All right, so next volume we have is actually one I've been anticipating for a long time since the announcement came out, but it is volume one of A Business Proposal. I just love how many manhwas I have in this package thanks to Ice Press because they have been adapting um, a lot of my favorite stories physically and it's just so nice to finally have these um, physically imprint as well. I love all these series. I read them all in digital platforms, but it's a whole nother experience reading it, um, you know, in hand. But I love A Business Proposal. It is such a lighthearted rom-com series between Shin Hari and Kang tae -mu. Um They meet um, because Shin Hari ends up going to an arranged marriage meeting in place of her friend, but ends up finding out that her partner is actually her boss at her company. And so it's just this really cool dynamic between the two and her trying to have to um, hide her identity because in the manhwa, she actually disguises herself with this really bright pink wig. But yeah, I am just super stoked to finally have this physically and I cannot wait to get the rest of the volumes for the series. Oh, and look at this. I think this is autographed by the author as well or the artist. This is so cute! Um, yeah, I cannot wait to get the rest of the series. And if you guys are interested um, in checking out the series and not reading the Mon Hoffers, the K-drama adaptation is also a really nice one as well. It's on Netflix. But yeah, that is A Business Proposal Volume 1. Another story I have been anticipating for a really, really long time. Philippa looks so beautiful on this cover. <sighs> I am just so, so happy that Ablaze actually um, picked the series up for a physical adaptation because this is one of my favorite Korean manhwas out there and it was actually one of the earliest series that I picked up and it's just an emotional roller coaster. The beginning of the series takes place in this little village and you kind of see that there is a lot of tension between humans and witches. The witches are able to kind of disguise themselves to kind of you know, be like humans, they don't really look that different. But obviously, if you're a witch, you are discriminated against because humans think that witches are evil. However, in this town, there is a particular girl named Cordelia where she, people feel like she is a witch. And so they are basically telling her to like leave the village. And she has a best friend, which is on the cover, Philippa. She's Philippa is kind of there for her and you kind of find out that Philippa is also a witch. But yeah, the story follows a boy named Collins who kind of befriends Philippa and their story kind of is, I would say, like tragedy at some point because um, they end up going through this like reincarnation cycle and it's like the same events that are happening over and over again because the ending fate between them is always the same result. So um, I think I probably spoiled a little too much on the story, but I try to kind of briefly summarize the beginning plot of the story because there's actually a collection of different stories um, in this particular series. It goes through different characters. So not just Colin and Philippa and Cordelia, it has other side characters um, in the series as well. But yeah, I love the art of the story. It is so beautiful. It is like a smaller volume, I would say, but I think this story is actually quite short anyways. So I don't mind like the thinner volumes compared to the other manhwas that I, I just showed you, but oh my God, I cannot wait. I am just so happy to have this in physical form. It is one of my favorite story. I think the last time I talked about this series was um, when I bought a whole bunch of merch for its collaboration with a cafe named Tunique. So I was very anticipated with this newest volume release and I cannot wait to get the other volumes. I've already pre-ordered volume two and that one has Cordelia's cover on it. Um, but yeah, that is A Witch of Mine.
Next series we have is another manhwa volume, but this one is volume three of The Remarried Empress. Always looking forward to getting another volume for this series because it is a very enticing and um, gravitating read. I've been reading the ongoing releases through the Webtoon app and I believe we're on a new season right now. I can't remember the number of the season, but it is really good. And um, obviously the physical um, adaptation is a little bit behind, but regardless, it wasn't like I was planning to read this in physical form anyways. I'm just collecting as so like the other series. And eventually when I do collect the whole entire series in print, um, then I'll sit down and reread the story. But for now, I'll just keep reading this on the Webtoon app digitally. But it's really good. I love the art of the Remarried Empress. And it is always a pleasure to get a new volume for this series. So yeah, that's volume three. And the last manhwa series we have is another new release of a new series, and it is What's Wrong with Secretary Kim? Oh, what a classic story. I remember watching this K-drama adaptation so long ago on the airplane when I was traveling abroad. I was so happy when they announced the physical English print of this series. Uh, to be honest, I kind of don't remember what has happened, but I know there's like some pretty dark elements and trauma that both of the main leads kind of go through. And it's kind of surprising because at face value, you would think it's a kind of a rom-com series between a secretary and her boss when um, the main girl actually ends up submitting her resignation letter to quit um, working for him, but he's like, why are you doing that? I thought I've always treated you well, but technically he hasn't because he's kind of overworking her. But yeah, I just love their dynamic and how things changed from that event on, which happens in the ending of the story. But yeah, I love the art so much. Oh, it's so beautiful. And yeah, if you guys are interested in like checking out the K-drama before the manhwa adaptation, I highly recommend it because the K-drama is so good as well. Um, I love the main leads that play the main characters in What's Wrong with Secretary Kim. So yeah, this is volume one. Always so happy for a new release and I'm looking forward to collecting the rest of the print as well. So, ooh, this is a pretty thicker volume, I would say. It's a little chunky compared to the rest of the volumes I have for Something's Wrong with Us. But yeah, this is volume 15, the newest release. Oh, there's always so much tension in the series, but we're almost nearly there to the end. I think we only have a couple more volumes until we hit the finale, which is very nice. And I wonder if Yen Press will translate the short stories. I think there's like side stories to this particular series, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm always kind of like on my toes when I read, um, this story because there's always a lot of twists and turns and mysteries to unravel every single volume like every single volume is a cliffhanger i'm very happy to have this new um release and we'll see how the story develops but yeah that is something's wrong with us volume 15. this is quinlun generic romance oh i'm always looking forward to another volume release for the story i actually have not read the physical print or the yen press translation for this story yet because i actually read this story fan scan later a while back and i think the chapter i left off was like chapter 52 or 53. the physical print right now is kind of behind and so i haven't really had the opportunity to sit down and kind of reread the story but Man, this story is like so wild, so like intriguing and lots of mystery and like supernatural elements. Basically follows the main girl and she lives in this Kunlun, that's what it's called. Basically it's like in the back cover here, you'll kind of notice it's like little houses that are kind of stacked between each other. And for me, it looks very claustrophobic, uh, but this is, I guess, a real place in China that used to be inhabited by people. I think a lot of these places are abandoned now, but maybe they still have some, but um, yeah, a lot of strange things happen in this little Kunlun city, and so she's kind of like involved in a few of them, and it's just kind of weird. 
And her relationship with the male lead in this story is kind of also like high tension, high stake. But there's some, some weird stuff going on in this story, which is very, very intriguing to me. But yeah, always happy to have another volume release of this series. And I can't wait for it to finally catch up to where I left off so I can actually read what happens next. Because right now, the fan scanlation has dropped the series once it got officially licensed. So yeah, we'll see where it goes. But I saw an announcement that this series is going to be ending around volume 12 or 13. Um, I think the mangaka actually made an announcement about it recently, so I guess we're heading to the end real soon, which I'm very sad about, but I cannot wait to see the finale of the story. But yeah, Kunlun Generic Romance, Volume 3. Moving on, we have the last volume of Requiem of the Rose King, Volume 17. I am so happy to finally hold this in my hand because I am behind a couple of volumes and so I was been waiting to get this final volume and then do a complete reread of the story. I feel like I've forgotten a lot about like bits and pieces of the story and so because there's like a lot of dialogue and lots of like things that are happening in this story, I just thought it'd be a good way to kind of refresh and actually kind of sit down and read this with a closer eye. The story is just, you know, an emotional roller coaster, um, lots of like up and down moments and I am very excited to see how the ending will pan out. So yeah, this is a beautiful cover of Richard. Cannot wait to finally sit down and reread this whole entire series, but that is volume 17 of Requiem of the Rose King. This is Laid Back Camp volume 13, one of my favorite slice of life series. I always look forward to getting a new volume of your camp, laid back camp, wherever you want to call it. But yeah, I think, I don't know, there's not a lot going on in this series in terms of plot wise. It's mainly just the girls going on their adventures, different camping sites, and it's always just kind of very relaxing to pick up and read. So I always look forward for that. And this year, I am very excited because we're getting season three of your camp and so uh, I cannot wait to have this anime playing on the background. Very happy to have the latest release of Laid Back Camp and the art is just so cute. I'm a big fan of Rin and Nadeshko's friendships. Next we have is volume 10 of Lovesick Ellie. This series is also heading towards its end in terms of the English physical print because I believe we only have two more volumes to go until we hit the final volume but this is another very favorite rom-com series of mine. Uh, so funny. Love the main leads dynamic. I'm always looking forward to getting another volume down for this series because I will definitely reread this once I have the whole entire a uh, physical print. I actually read this in completion a long time ago thanks to fan scanlation and so I haven't really sat down and reread the Yen Press translations yet but we'll do soon. Two more volume skills. So I think we'll get it probably in the next couple of hauls um, that I unbox but yeah volume 10 of Lovesick Ellie. So the next volume I have is actually a gift that I am going to give to my brother because he wants to start collecting Oshinoko, so I've already talked about this series quite a few times and I actually own my own copy as well, but yeah, this is a gift for my brother. So the next series I have is one I actually have no idea what it is about. I picked it up because of one reason only, and it is because it is illustrated by an artist named Sora. So Sora actually is an mangaka for one of my favorite ongoing shoujo series which is Love Me Before You Die or Suruki to Hajin. I'm probably butchering the Japanese name but that specific um, series there is not physically translated in English and so I've been collecting the Japanese volumes and it's the only series I collect in Japanese. I picked up the story because one, I love her artwork and two, I'm hoping that if she does do well in this particular series that they will also pick up Love Me Before You Die, but it's a long shot. Um, I don't really know too much about the story, but it looks like a fantasy supernatural series, which 
is always very intriguing, but the art looks really, really nice, and the characters on the cover look really pretty as well. So I am very excited to take a shot at reading the story, even though I have no idea what it is about. So kind of an impulse buy, I would say, but I'm hoping that the story would be good as well. But yeah, that is a reincarnated witch spells doom. So pretty interesting title, I would say. But yeah. All right, so next volume we have is Honey Lemon Soda Volume 2. And this cover of Kai is so beautiful. His hair is so bright and yellow. And I like that he's holding a lemon soda bottle. But yeah, another shoujo series I am definitely obsessed with. Um, I read the series fan scan later a long time ago. The art is very beautiful. It's kind of your, um, I would say like, typical shoujo series. I don't know if typical is a really good word for it, but um, basically it follows a very shy girl named Yuka and she just has a lot of trouble interacting with other people until um, one day she meets this guy named Kai who has this bright lemon soda colored hair and when they first meet he actually saves her and he tells her that she should you know, do what she wants and she's inspired by this and so she ends up transferring to like a high school that she wasn't planning on going to originally but then she ends up bumping to him and that's kind of the start of their relationship but yeah um it's a very popular long-running shoujo series in japan as well as in the you know international shoujo community so i'm always looking forward um, to see the developments in kind of like the Japanese releases. The English print is a little behind, but I'm still very happy that we got it physically printed as well. So yeah, that is Honey Lemon Soda Volume 2. The next series we have is the newest release of Mirko-chan. I'm always like on my toes when I read this story because one, I don't know why I choose to read this story in the middle of the night because it's definitely not good for my heart but two i mean like i feel for mariko chan she goes through some weird stuff um throughout the story and uh i really love how the story is turning out but so many creepy elements i don't think i'll, I'll do like a real flip through of the story because there's some graphic scenes for those who don't want to see it but very very um, obsessed with the story but basically it follows a girl named Mariko Chan she one day ends up having the special power to see like ghosts or spirits or like these supernatural creatures that no one else can see and she kind of has to live in a way where like she doesn't notice these supernatural creatures because if she notices them they kind of like follow her and like attack her and so i don't know i would not be able to look at a spiritual creature straight in the face and not like react to it whatsoever but mariko chan made like props to her for sticking to her guns and ignoring them because i would never i could never i'm like a scaredy cat but yeah Always looking forward for a new release, and this is Volume 7 of Mariko-chan. Next is one that has been on a hiatus for a really long time, to the point where I feel like I need to reread this series, but um, we have Volume 9 of Case Study of Bonnie Tuss. Oh my god, it's been so long since we got a new release. I think the author went on a hiatus because she was having some health um issues that she wanted to focus and so we've been on like a one year hiatus i believe but yeah i'm so happy there's a new volume that came out and that things are better now but from i, I remember there was a pretty big cliffhanger at the previous volume things are just not going well for bonitas right now so um, I'm looking forward to seeing how things pan out in this volume and where this direction will go. But I think for the most part, I still need to reread the story because I kind of forgot everything that has happened. But I'm so happy! It is so exciting to have a new volume, especially one that's been a while since we had any updates for. So yeah, that's volume 9 of Case Study of Bonnie Tess. So the next series we have is a new release of Teasing Master Takaki-san, Volume 17. Always looking forward to getting the next installment. It's another slice of life series that I always look forward to getting because I just, it's really chill, but basically it follows our two main characters, Nishitaka and Takaki. 
they make bets you know throughout the story and usually Nishtaka is on like the losing side but there's always a little bit of cute romantic tension with them and it's kind of funny because they're like in middle school and I'm like they're so young but yeah I just love stories where like the two main characters are like seatmates with each other and they're always kind of joking around and having a good time so uh yeah it's just really cute story it doesn't really take too much like effort in reading and I just love um, seeing how the story kind of progresses even though I would say nothing really happens in the story where it's like plot moving you know like a major plot point but yeah that is volume 17 of Teasing Master Takaki-san. Another new release we have is Love of Kill. Ooh, look at Song Ranha. He looks he's kind of beaten up and handcuffed. What is this cover? Anyways another favorite Josie series that I really enjoy but uh, we're really I think we're heading towards the end of the physical print of this series so I actually am a little behind a couple of volumes for Love of a Kill because I'm just waiting to collect all of the volumes for this series before I do another reread of the story but I um, read this a while ago and then I watched the anime adaptation with my friend and now we're just kind of seeing how the ending of Love of Kill pans out, but the story just follows two characters, Song Rang Ha and Chateau. They're basically kind of enemies at the beginning of the series, but later on you can see that there's a lot more going on in the background and their relationship is really not what it seems. They're definitely more connected. And so yeah, really love the dynamic between the two main leads and Love of Kill is just full of interesting mystery and fun action as well. And by fun action, I just say like intense action. So yeah, that is Love a Kill volume 11. We have Cheeky Brat volume six. This is kind of like your another typical high school rom-com series. Follows a girl named Yuki. She is the basketball team manager at her school. And this guy right here is a younger classmate and he's also in the basketball team. So just kind of follows their relationship um, throughout high school. And what I love about the story is that it not only goes during high school, but beyond high school. So you actually get their college life as well. And yeah, it has some a little bit of sports element here and there. But for the most part, uh, I would say there are some quite frustrating times because there's this love triangle that kind of progresses throughout the story and it just never ends until much later. But besides that, I mean, the story's pretty chill. It's very spicy at times and I love a good like romance, tension, push and pull series. But overall, they get together quite early on, I would say, which is also very nice because you get to see them interact a lot um, throughout the story and I'm a sucker for that. But yeah, that is volume 6 of Cheeky Brat. Another new release that's actually not a Yen Press series, it is Snow White with the Red Hair volume 25 and it's Obi and Shiryuki. This is so beautiful. I am a sucker for Snow White with the Red Hair. I love the adventure aspect of the series and seeing how much you Shiryuki grows throughout the story and her interactions with all the characters that she meets on her journey and yeah I just love the art as well. One thing I recently saw about this story is that the mangaka is taking a hiatus so hopefully they're doing well. The plot progression of Shiryuki is kind of like on the slower side so this hiatus feels like it's going to be forever. So happy to have the latest volume release of Snow White with the Red Hair. So next we have is A Condition Called Love, Volume 3. This is a newest release for this series. And before I even get started in this volume, I'm, I just wanted to say I am so happy that the series is going to get an anime adaptation. Like, yes, I'm so happy because um, last time I talked about a condition called love. There was speculation that it'll either get a live action drama or movie adaptation or maybe like a rare chance of an anime adaptation but here we are we have confirmation of the anime adaptation. Very happy for the shoujo fandom because we are really eating all of these new anime sh 
adaptations for our favorite like you know shoujo even josie series so the story i feel like is going to be a really nice series to be adapted as an anime and i cannot wait to see hutaru and hana Hananoi um, come to life in anime form. It's going to be so wonderful. I have seen the key visual of the series and it does look a little bit different from what I expected because of, you know, the manga art is so beautiful, but we'll see later on how, like, you know, the actual, like, anime trailer will look like. So I still have hopes that it's going to look amazing. But yeah, I'm very happy to have the latest volume release of Condition Call Up. Mostly very excited for the anime adaptation, but yeah, that is volume 3 of A Condition Called Love. Another new volume release that we have is No Longer Heroin. This is volume 3 of this series. Uh, I think for a lot of people, this is quite a frustrating one, but for me, I don't know, maybe it's a guilty pleasure of mine to read frustrating stories at times. But basically, the series follows our main girl, and she has this, like, very ideal perspective of her life. She thinks herself as, like, the heroine of her own story, and that one day she'll end up with her best friend, um, who's kind of this, like, player, and he, has, he doesn't have, like, very long-term relationship. However, one day she finds out that this, like, very unpopular girl that isn't good-looking by the main girl standard ends up asking out her best friend and their relationship ends up being a lot more steady than she had anticipated and so she's kind of worried and I would say she's quite selfish in that aspect because like she wants her best friend but she never even acted upon like confessing to him or anything and she's kind of relying that like one day he'll just end up with her um so I guess that would be the selfish aspect but as frustrating as it is I do I do really enjoy this story a lot. Uh, one is the comedic facial expressions in this story. It is very funny. Everyone, um, you know, has this really like exaggerated ex um, expressions. And for the most part too, there's a lot of comedic moments in the story. So it is very entertaining. I am very happy to have the latest release of No Longer a Heroine, Volume 3. And I'm looking forward for the next volume as well. And the last story I have is actually a new series release. Uh, let me show you guys here. And it is Sunbeams in the Sky. So I did preview this story digitally. Um, and I was very intrigued and impressed by kind of the setup of the story. So basically it follows the main girl and she has like a twin sister and for some reason they end up going to like different school however she finds out her twin sister is actually like bullied and ends up like being critically injured and so she ends up going to the school that her sister attended and seeing like what has happened and who caused the issues that resulted her sister from like being in the hospital and not being able to go to school so it's very very intriguing and obviously since they're twins no one really knows um what is going on but this story actually reminds me of another story written by the mangaka of something's wrong with us and another story about twins and them switching places or like due to an accident or something like that i can't remember the name of it i'll put it on the screen if i do know what it is but yeah i do really like these type of twin stories and like solving some sort of mystery involved with like what has happened but yeah i do like the twin sisters relationship so far they're very like you know close with each other and they do really care for each other so yeah, I am very looking forward to reading more of the series. I really have no idea. I have never read the fan scans of the story before. So it was really nice to pick up a story where I, I have no idea. And I'm basically just reading this as it goes. So looking forward for the next volume. And the art is really pretty as well. That is Sunbeams in the Sky, Volume 1. And I cannot wait to read the next volume. And with that, that's everything in this package. I do have one more package from Write Stuff that has one volume. Alright, so here is the last package from Right Stuff that I have. Let me quickly open it up because it only has one volume and it is a series that has just recently been released in the English print. So the last series I have for this haul is 
Like a Butterfly Volume 1, and this is written by the uh, mangaka Shu Morishita. Um, they've written two other works that is quite popular, such as A Sign of Affection and Short Cake Cake. So this one is actually one of their really earlier works. I don't know if it's their first work, but it is one that I remember reading from them first, and I think it is the one that's like the oldest out of the two that I mentioned. But I don't really remember too much about the premise of the story because I read this, I think, like early high school and I never had a chance to reread the story again. Um, but basically it just follows two characters that are like very shy and introverted and they end up kind of like getting into this relationship together. Now, I could be wrong with this whole premise, but that was how I remember it as. But yeah, love the art of Shur Morishita. They do such a great job with the execution of the art as well. I think it's very, very pretty. I was very surprised when Shoujo B announced the physical print of the series because it is quite an older one, but I am, you know, very happy to always collect another Shur Morishita series because then it'll look really nice to have like a shelf dedicated to um, all of the mangaka work. So yeah, that is the last volume of this haul and let's head on to the next package. All right, so just making a quick insert here because it's taking me quite a little bit of time to edit this manga haul and I actually just got another package from Red Stuff Anime. So I just wanted to quickly show you guys a couple of the volumes that I got uh, for this package and there's only five volumes which I've already taken out beforehand. So I'll show you guys all of the volumes I got. So first we have is Fly Me to the Moon volume 18. And on the cover, we have beautiful Sukasa and this adorable cat on the cover. I really like this cover a lot. It is very, very cute. Um, and then next we have is Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible, Volume 8. And I adore all of the covers with Kubo because they always make Surashi, I think that's his name, um, very tiny in comparison to Kubo. Like... I don't know, I find it super adorable, but yeah, both series, um, I'll talk about them in tandem because I feel like I always get their volumes um, together, but I have been enjoying watching the anime uh, adaptations for both of the series. I just finished Kubo and I am almost done with Tono Kakawaii's second season, um, but yeah, I just love the slice of life feels with um, the romantic developments between the main leads as well and a um, very calming series and nothing really much happens in both stories but it's really nice to just real read and chill. And the next series we have is the volume 8 of Vampire Night Memories which is the spin-off series of Vampire Night and I've been really enjoying reading Vampire Night Memories because one, I'm a big Vampire Night fan and two, definitely gives you more insights to the character post the story of Vampire Night. So I do like the continuation and um, I've been really interested and invested in the new characters or I don't want to spoil what the new characters are, but yeah, it's been very interesting to read um, kind of how things are developing in the story. And next we have is volume 2 of Wolf Girl and Black Prince. Very happy to have another volume of this series and I can't wait until Shoujo B finally prints all of the volumes for this series so I can sit down and reread it. I know the story is quite problematic to uh, some people and so I don't really want to talk too much about it but this is a guilty pleasure series of mine and even though the couple, the main leads in the story are problematic, I just find myself enjoying it still. Like, I don't know, maybe it's like nostalgic or maybe I just do like the couple's development near, I guess like throughout the story, but they come a long way. Um, not perfect, but um, I think the growth is there, <laughs> maybe. And lastly, we have volume two of Oshi no Ko and we have the beautiful Ruby on the cover of this volume. Very, very cool. And yeah, I've been enjoying the story of Oshinoko so far, and the anime adaptation was 
amazing and I'm really glad that the series has gained so much popularity and recognition um, this past couple of months and it's really cool to see how much the series has grown and become widespread but yeah I'm excited to see how the story continues to play out I am quite ahead in terms of where the physical print is because I'm reading it through the manga plus app I think I don't remember what it's the name of the app or the website that you can read this on Simapub but yeah um, but it's really cool to at least catch up with the physical print for Oshino Ko. We still got a long way to go, but um, I think volume three is supposed to come out in the next couple of months. And then, yeah, cannot wait to get my Kana cover when that arrives as well. But yeah, those are the five volumes I got for this Right Stuff package. And of course, I'm very happy to have them in my collection. And yeah, that is everything for this little impromptu clip. All right, so for our next package, this is from a shop called JYK Doodles. So let me guess, let me show you guys the sticker right here. Very, very cute, but this store I've been following quite a while just did a recent shop reopening and so I did snag a few items uh, for myself and my sister and I actually gave my sister herself already so I'll just be showing you guys what I got so let me open the box so here it is Ooh, let me show you guys the little card that came with the order so it is this item here very very cute it has like a really cute illustration and this is the back as well and the items that i got are some bucket hats so let me show you guys each of the bucket hats this is a yuji inspired bucket hat and what is cool about this particular bucket hat and the rest of them that I'll show you in a little bit is that it's reversible. So if you turn this side, I believe this one is the design for Sukuna. So yeah, you get two designs worth for one bucket hat, which is a very good deal. So I'm very impressed. And then I'll show you the other bucket hat. So this one is a Nanami inspired bucket hat. Very adorable with this little bread design and that little knife. And then when you turn the back, you see little Gojo cat. Oh my God, this is so adorable. And the embroidery stitching quality is very, very nice as well. Like, I love the design and it's very simple. And yeah, I think it's really cute. And the last bucket hat is actually a Hanako inspired hat. So, toilet bound Hanako. I'm not sure what these characters are. It's been a while since I've watched the anime, but I thought this was really cute. I love this color. And then the other side, we have this one, which I can't remember this little creature's name, but. Um, yeah, I think I'll definitely have to rewatch this um, eventually, but I'm glad that there's going to be a Toilet Bound Hanako reboot in the works. So uh, it'll be really nice to see how the anime will change uh, with this new reboot, but I was very surprised about that announcement as well. So yeah, those are the three bucket hats that I got from JYK Doodles. They look fantastic in person and I cannot wait to sport all six designs. All right, so the very last package I have is actually a figure I just recently got from Good Smile Company. So let me just open this up. Here it is. So this is the Heaven's Official Blessing Lily Pad uh, figure. I'm pretty sure there is a better name for it, but that's what I'm gonna describe this figure at the moment. But look at that, Shilin Hua Chung looks so adorable in this little lily pad, and I am so excited to assemble this little figure. I am obsessed with collecting Heaven's Official Blessing chibi figures. I already have two, and this will be the third figure that I will be owning. So yeah, let me assemble this. For you guys and then show you guys the final product of this figure 
Okay, so before I assemble the whole entire figure together, I just want to show you guys um, the little pieces up close. So first we have is Xilian. Oh my god, I really, really love the I like quality of these little chibi figures. Like, I believe this price for this whole entire set wasn't actually that expensive. Probably maybe 100 USD max, but oh my god, he is so adorable. I think it just looks very very beautiful yeah i think the sculpting and the details of his actual figure looks really good and obviously i'm just obsessed so now we have is hua chang he also looks really good i think the quality of these chibi figures as mentioned before looks very nice i don't see any issues with the sculpting whatsoever so that is always very very nice and Overall, I think they really did a great job capturing his facial expression, the details of his clothes, and I'm very impressed. And then we have this little lantern thing, which I may be wrong, but also very cute and small. And then of course the top of the leaf that Hua Chung will be holding. I think the only thing I'm kind of worried is if it might be too heavy and that he might like lean over or um, all that. It's, it's not too heavy, but I'm just a little scared because last time for his Nindor, he had an umbrella, but then it was too heavy that his hand kind of like fell off multiple times. So I'm hoping this would not be the case, but we will see um, when I assembled it. And then last but not least, we have this beautiful base right here. So, so pretty. I love the little flowers and of course this beautiful fish that's like hopping out of the water and then the lily pad will have the connections so you can put the figures on and what i like about these ones compared to the ones that i bought from billy billy is that they're not magnetic so you can actually securely put them on because the one from billy billy i had to like magnetize so they kind of just click on but sometimes they just don't stay still but yeah, overall the base looks very nice and yeah, let me assemble all of these pieces together and then show you the final form. Oh my god, they look absolutely adorable all assembled together. I am truly, truly happy to have this adorable chibi figure for Heaven's Official Blessing, Hua Chang and Xie Lian. It looks so beautiful. It is kind of like tilted on where I have it placed on my rotating base because there is some ridge on the bottom of the base so it doesn't really look that good being placed on like that surface. But overall though, I just love how this figure turned out. I hope that Good Smile continues to make more of these figures in the future because Ha Chung and Shailen just look so beautiful. That is the Heaven's Official Blessing figure that I got from Good Smile Company and let's head out to the outro. So here's an overview of some of the items that I got for today's haul. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me share about my thoughts on all of the new series and volume releases that I got from Right Stuff Anime and also all the merch that I got for this video as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing and I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, take care. Bye!